Hi guys, in this quick little video I want to show you how you can make two switches toggle. Uh, so let's just get right in and get on with it. So I'm just going to create a couple of switches. Have switch 1 and switch 2. And we'll just have a look at this in contact. So we want it so that you can click one switch and it'll come on and you can click it off. And the same with the other. But if one of them's on and you click the other switch, the first one should turn off. That's the idea. So we're going to use a function so we're not repeating ourselves. And we'll call it toggle switches. And this is going to take two parameters. It's going to take the first switch, which is going to be the switch you want to be turned on. And it's going to take a second switch, which is the one to turn off. And it's going to be really easy. We're going to say if the first switch is on, if it equals 1, then the second switch should equal 0. It should be turned off. And then we just need a couple of callbacks. One for the first switch. And it's going to call our function and we're going to pass in the first switch as the first parameter and the second switch as the second parameter. So if switch 1 is on, switch 2 will be off. If switch 1 is off, then nothing's going to happen so we can just turn that switch on and off as we normally would. Then we're going to create a, a second callback for the next switch and we're just going to reverse these two parameters. So it will do the opposite. I'm going to hit F5, paste this into contact. And now we can turn this one off and on as usual, same with that one. But if we have one on and we click the next one, it toggles between them. So only one switch can be on at a time. This kind of thing is useful if you're doing a microphone mixer and you want mute and solo buttons where the mute button can't be on at the same time as the solo button and things like that. Kind of like this one in contact. Okay, let's look at a slightly more advanced example now where we would have three or more switches. So this, this example is something you can take away and should work with pretty much any number of switches. Now, because we're getting more complicated, what we could do is we could expand this if statement and we could end up with a third switch and would pass in another parameter with switch three. And if we had a fourth switch, pass in switch four and we'd handle all that in here. But that's not neat and it's not expandable. You've got to keep going in and changing the number of switches and changing the function. What would be much better is if we could have a function that will work with any number of switches. So let's do that now. I'm going to just delete this bottom callback for now. I'm going to clear out this function because we're going to do some rewriting and I'll get rid of this, uh, these parameters. So I'll create two more switches and so that we can work on any number of switches we're going to need these to have their IDs stored in an array. So I'm going to create an array and we'll just call it IDs and this needs to have as many elements as the number of switches you want to uh, be using. So we're going to have four there and then we just need to put the IDs of each switch into the array. Okay, so we've got an array with four elements and it's got the IDs of our four switches. Okay, so how this is going to work is in our callback for our switch, we're going to pass the ID of the switch that's being clicked into our function. So we're going to need a parameter and we'll call it switch ID. And we can remove this code here. And we have two choices of how we pass in the parameter. We can either use it from the IDs array and put in ID zero, but this isn't going to be as clear as writing this. So that's the way I prefer to do it, just because it's clear exactly what you're passing in there. You can come down to this um, callback and you can see straight away you're passing in the ID of the switch in the callback name, rather than having an array name there and having to go back up to the top of your code to find out what that array is for. Right, so we've got our ID coming into 
our function here, we're going to need a loop and the loop is going to go through every single ID in the array and it's going to turn off all the switches except the switch that we've passed in. So it works in a similar way to our simple two switch example, but we're using a loop so we can access more switches in, um, in, in the function. So we'll start off by creating a variable I and we'll have a for loop. And we're just going to use the number of elements. Just let me update that. We're just going to use the number of elements in our IDs array. And then what we want to do is we want to say if this ID that's been passed in is not the ID that we're looping on currently. So let's write that. So if IDs I, so I is where we're up to in our loop. So if this ID is not the one that we passed in, the switch ID, then we want to turn it off because it's not the switch we want to keep on. So we want to turn off this switch and because we're using IDs here and we're not actually using the um, the actual switch variable itself, we have to um, get the value. So I'm using uh, the shorthand here to get the value. And we're just going to set that to zero. So we're turning off that switch. Now we need to duplicate this for each of our switches. And we should be able to press F5 and hopefully everything will work out okay. So there's our four switches and that shorthand we used where we used um, this line here where, where I'm saying um, here's the ID from our IDs array and we're calling the value rather than the actual number in the array. And what it converts it to when we compile is set control par. Uh, there's the name of the IDs array. It's been scrambled by the compiler and we're using control par value and we're setting it to zero. So that's what's going on in this line of code once it's been expanded. Okay, so I've hit F5, I've compiled it, I've put it into contact. Now I should be able to turn these switches on and off independently of the others. But if any one of these switches is on and I click another switch, it should toggle the, uh, the others off. So only one switch can be on at a time. All right, guys, I'll put the code back on the screen so you can see it again. Uh, any questions, just put them in the comments below or start a thread on the VI Control Forum. I hope you found this useful. Um, it's a good idea to get familiar with this shorthand because it makes things so much easier. But um, I hope you can use this in your scripts. And thank you for watching, and I will see you next time.